Dave Stoblin here. We're going to try and do some good math today. We're talking about probability. Probability is most easily defined as how likely something will happen. For example, <coughs> you might ask how likely is it that I'll win the lottery? How likely is it that I'll graduate? How likely is it that I play cards and I get a full house? So lots of different some things can happen depending on the type of activity we're talking about. So within the, the idea of probability, there's two subsets. We can have theoretical probability and we can have experimental probability. And I would like to explain what both of these are. Theoretical pr probability is how likely something will happen based on expected outcomes. So when we talk about expected outcomes, this might mean something like making a prediction about a six-sided die. Um, we know that it has six sides, so we could make a prediction like what is the probability that if we roll that die that we'll get a number one. We know it has six sides and so and it only has a single side with a one on it so the probability would be one out of six. Experimental probability is how likely something will happen based on actual or experimental data. So a prime example of this would be something like making a prediction about how likely a person will survive cancer based on data from previous cancer patients. For example, it's very common for uh, cancer to be, or, or the survival of cancer to be based on like a, a five-year limit. So what is the probability that a person will survive for five years after the, the cancer is detected and taken care of? Um, that's, that's pretty common. I know in my mother's case, the uh, probability for her and her type of cancer was 95% uh, survival rate for after five years and in fact she was one of the lucky ones that in that 95% that made it uh, for five years after her cancer was detected. Now that 95% survival rate, rate was based on 
actual data from previous cancer survivors um, as opposed to theoretical probability where you have expected outcomes. So you often hear people confusing probability and odds. They might say, what's the probability you're going to win the lottery? Or um, what are the odds I'm going to win the lottery? Well, it turns out that probability and odds are not the same thing. They are related, but they are different. So let's talk about the difference between probability and odds. The probability of an event occurring is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. So, for example, maybe we are going to roll a six-sided die. And for us, it is desirable to roll a one or a two. So when we're talking about probability, we would say the probability of rolling a 1 or a 2 is equal to the number of favorable outcomes. Well, our favorable outcome is the 1 or the 2, and so there are two of those. The number of possible outcomes on a die are 6. So in this case, the probability of rolling a 1 or 2 is 2 out of 6. Okay. Now, the odds look at the same situation a bit differently. There are odds in favor and there are odds against. Odds in favor is shown as the number of favorable outcomes compared to the number of not favorable outcomes. So in our situation where we're rolling a die, we would say the odds in favor of rolling a 1 or a 2 are as follows. There are two favorable outcomes, which means rolling the 1 or 2, and there are four not favorable outcomes, which would be the 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so you can see that the, the probability is a fraction, 2 over 6, where the 6 is the total number of possible outcomes, where the odds are shown as a ratio where you have the favorable outcomes and the unfavorable outcomes. Now up here we mentioned odds against, and odds against work like this the number of not favorable outcomes to the number of favorable outcomes. So it's like odds in favor, but it's just reversed. So in our die case down here, if we wanted to do odds against, a 1 or a 2 on the dice, 
there would be four not favorable outcomes to two favorable outcomes. Okay? Now, what I want you to notice is that the numerator of probability is number of favorable outcomes, and the first number in the odds is number of favorable outcomes. So these two numbers are the same. The denominator is the total possible outcomes, which include the favorable and the not favorable outcomes. So the number of possible outcomes is equal to the not favorable or the favorable and the not favorable added together. So you can see that 2 plus 4 equals 6. So knowing this, you can do the following. Say, for example, that the probability of some event is equal to 3 over 7. If you know the probability, can you find the odds in favor of this event? Well, what we know is the top number in probability is the number of favorable outcomes, and the first number of odds in favor is the number of favorable outcomes. We also know that the 7 in the denominator is all the possible outcomes, so if we subtract the favorable outcomes, we would be left with the unfavorable outcomes. And so the probability of an event being 3 over 7 is the same as the odds being 3 to 4. Likewise, say that you know the odds in favor are equal to 2 to 3. We could figure out the probability of the event as follows. We know for odds in favor that the first number is the favorable outcomes as is the numerator of the probability. And we know that the favorable and the unfavorable outcomes added together give you the total number of outcomes. So if the odds in favor are 2 to 3, the probability of that same event happening would be 2 over 5. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to talk about events and complements. So within probabilities, we could have an event and we would say what is the probability of that event happening. Then we might say what is the complement of an event? Well, the complement of an event is the probability of that event not happening. Okay? So event, probability that it will happen. Complement, probability that it will not happen. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about is the scale of probabilities. And probabilities fall on a scale. And that scale runs from 0 to 1 or 0% a hundred percent. And so right in the middle would be 
half or 50%. And the way that the scale of probabilities works is that if you are at half or 50%, the event is equally likely or not likely to happen. If the probability is 1 or 100% happening, or 100%, then the event will happen. If the probability is 0 or 0%, zero the event will not happen. So, as we are considering events and complements, if the event is the probability of something happening and the complement is the probability of something not happening, then what that means is that the event plus the complement must equal 1 or 100 percent. Okay. So let's say that we roll a die, a six-sided die, and we want a favorable outcome of a 4. So we might say, what is the probability of rolling a 4 on a six-sided dice? And that probability would be 1 out of 6. This would be the event. The complement of the event would be something like this. What is the probability of not rolling a 4? And in this case, that would be 5 out of 6 on a 6-sided dice. And so what we show, if the event and the complement equal 1, the event is 1 6 and the complement is 5 sixths, and if you add those together, they are 6 sixths, or 1. Okay, well this discussion leads us then to, um, if we know that the event plus the complement equals 1, we could um, subtract the complement from both sides, and we could say the probability of the event is equal to 1 minus the complement. Or we could say the complement of the event is equal to 1 minus the probability of the event. Now what will happen is that Sometimes you'll want to know the probability of an event, and it's very hard to figure out, but it turns out that it's very easy to figure out the complement. So what you would do is find a complement, subtract it by one, and then subtract it from one, and then you get the probability of the event. Okay. The next thing is the difference between independent oops I spelled that wrong independent events and dependent events independent events are two or more events that do not affect each other. We sometimes say this is with replacement. 
dependent events are two or more events that do affect each other. And we often say this is without replacement. So let's do an example of each. If you've ever played Scrabble, you know that you have a box lid full of letters. Like let's say we have two S's, we have an A, we have an E, and we have three R's. Well, say for example that we wanted to calculate an independent event, the probability of drawing an S and an R. Okay? So what this would mean, the word and is independent and it means with replacement. It would mean what's the probability that the first time we're going to pull out an S and then we put that back and the second time we're going to pull out an R. Well here's how you would do it. The first time when you pull out an S there are two S's and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. So then we put that back so there are still seven tiles in the lid and the probability of getting an R would be three R's out of seven. So that's six out of 49. Dependent events would work like this. What's the probability of drawing an S then drawing an R? And in this case, you would draw out the S and you would leave it out and then you would find the probability of drawing an R. So for example, the, f the first time we're drawing a tile, there are two S's out of seven. Now if we do not replace the tile, so the S stays out, there are now only six tiles in the lid and there are three R's to choose from. So this probability would be six out of 42. Okay, so with that, we will be done for today. May the odds and the probability be ever in your favor.